Hello, hello, boys and girls. Happy holidays. Uh, happy Kwanzaa. Uh, happy Hanukkah. And Merry Christmas. Um, I'm your host, James Marsters, for the James Marsters Streamly Christmas Special. Uh, this is my tree. Um, this is my fireplace. This is my house. Um, yeah, I've had this tree for um, 25 years. This is a fake tree. Uh, I had two of them, actually. Um, it was really important that I had a uh, artificial tree when my kids were, were kids. Um, I would do a full Christmas here at this house with my daughter, and as soon as she went to bed, I would get on the highway uh, and drive about six hours up north uh, to a little farmhouse I rented to visit my son. Uh, and then I would break out the other tree, set it up, get the ornaments on it, um, get the, the, the pre-wrapped presents underneath it, get a couple hours of sleep, and uh, do it all over again. So I had two Christmases every year. Uh, and so that being the case, it was really important that I, that I could just take a tree out of the closet <laughs> and get it ready quickly. Uh, and I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it has like a bunch of little um, optic lights in it, you know, like little optic wires, so it kind of sparkles really nicely. And it just keeps going, man. Uh, the, the tree has never failed me, uh, and I hope I keep it forever. I, I don't want another tree ever. Uh, but anyway, it's good to have you guys with us. Um, so what we're doing today is we are signing autographs, uh, and I'm going to try to uh, to give a little uh, uh, I don't know backstory uh, if I can uh, as we go. The first one uh, is for Crystal, and she wants me to write harmony. Is it a sodding bread box? I don't know what episode that refers to. Um, and it kind of brings up an interesting thing, which is that uh, oftentimes actors are, are asked uh, about a specific line or a specific scene or a moment, uh, and they don't remember it. And it's not because uh, we don't care, it's because when you work 12 to 20 hours a day for nine months out of the year, you get really, really tired. And the makeup covers up, you know, the black under your eyes, but it can't cover up the fact that your brain just doesn't work as well anymore. And your, your short-term memory goes out the window, basically. So, like, a lot of times, like, don't blame actors if they don't remember, if they don't remember uh, uh, a specific moment. It's not that we don't care. It's that we care so much that we work that hard that we can't remember everything. So, I don't know. Does anyone, does anyone else know what that line comes from? Harmony. Harmony. Is it a sodding bread box? Is he guessing? Is he guessing it? I don't know. You've stumped me, Crystal. Uh, but this one's for you. I'm going to wonder about this as I'm going to sleep tonight. And hello to everyone who's saying hello. I'm quiet when I'm writing these quotes because I don't want to mess it up. And frankly, it's an art form to be left-handed and using a paint pen uh, and not smudging uh, the autograph. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Crystal, this one's for you. Right on. And I am. Let's see. Sweet! Okay, we're off the races. Uh, the next one is for Abby. She wanted one of these. This was in one of the only, like, I remember when, um, when I first got on the show, you know, you kind of like, you kind of like see how much the show is invested in your character by how big of a set they use for your home. 
<laughs> like, what is the Spike set this year? And if it's a big set, you're like, oh, they have plans for my character. I remember uh, when I got on um, the first year uh, in season two, I had a massive set. It was like a meat packing plant. Uh, and it took up almost a whole soundstage, maybe half a soundstage. Um, and I was like, wow, this, they've invested in this character. And then after that, there were very little tiny sets, like not even a full room, like two walls. <laughs> and I was like, oh God, they're about to kill me off. <laughs> but they never did. Um, Abby, uh, you wanted a heart uh, on this, and I'm gonna put the heart on my sleeve as a joke. Put his love to you. And also, I do wear my heart on my sleeve a little bit. There you go, Abby. That's for you. Yeah, so I am, I'm enjoying uh, a Christmas. Actually, my kids are coming to visit one at a time, but I got to, I, I got to decorate the tree all by myself this time. Uh, do you know how like everyone wants to decorate a tree like the way they want to decorate it? And you have to kind of like, you have to kind of work together and like, you don't get your way, really. <laughs> um, uh, this year I got my way. I got to do the tree exactly. Do it. Uh, which is every ornament is actually under the force of gravity. You know, like it's actually hanging down. It's not laid on the outside of the tree. It's actually you could swing it if you wanted to. Every single very particular about that. <laughs> Never until this year had a tree where every ornament was like that. And I'm very proud of myself. Obviously, uh, this one is for Amanda. Uh, and again. This is kind of interesting. This, this, uh, I came to the set once. I would come to the set often dressed in black. I dress in black all the time. I always have. Uh, it's the cheapest and easiest way to look cool. And when you're a theater actor, you need a cheap and easy way to look cool. Um, so yeah, a lot of artists dress in black for that reason. Because uh, we don't have a whole lot of money. Um, and so I would come, I would come dressed in black, uh, at the beginning of the, of the work day and they would think that I was already in costume. And uh, most of the time I would say, no, no, just one moment, let me put your t-shirt on and your jeans on. Take my t-shirt and jeans off. Uh, but this day I was really lazy and I was like, oh yeah, sure, I'm in costume. And I showed up um, and I cheated and I came to this photo call in my own clothes. I know it's my own clothes because that is that was five bucks at Hot Topic at the time. It's probably 750 now. Um, but man, there's a lot of promotional photographs from that session that have lasted. Like that's like that's the most popular photo session <laughs> for seven years. Um, so maybe I should have gone into costume. Uh, but Amanda, that is for you. Ooh, this is the first Zamasu. Especially ordered these. It's taken me forever uh, to get some Zamasu to sign. This is a character from Dragon Ball Super. Um, and I uh, I played Zamasu, who is a total total douchebag. <laughs> um, uh, he uh, uh, I, I did him for free. <laughs> because I was basically trying to apologize for a horrible movie that I did uh, years ago, uh, Dragon Ball Evolution, where I played Piccolo. Uh, and uh, uh, I cannot believe how lucky I am to have played um, one of the main villains of, uh, of the latest Dragon Ball iteration, which is Dragon Ball Super, which rocks! Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna write a... Um, Okay, cool. I'm gonna have to write, I'm gonna write this now. 
So I'm going to be quiet because I'm going to be careful. Oh, and this is for Gene Bug. Hi, Gene Bug. Like the longer the quote, the more of a masterpiece it is uh, when you don't smudge it. Gene Bug, I didn't smudge that paragraph you just made me write. Check that out. That's a that's a that's freaking art right there. Damn, I'm good. Back when I when I first started signing autographs, my left hand would just be covered in ink. All you know, it's taken me a long time to learn how to avoid smudging it. So I'm very happy about. And Jing Bug, you get the first Zamasu. Um, yeah, I did it. I did Zamasu under a fake name so that they could not pay me, so that I could just tell people at conventions, uh, the real Dragon Ball fans, uh, that, the, that me doing the role was just an apology <laughs> for that horrible film. I'm a Dragon Ball fan, and that film uh, offended me. Uh, so. Uh, if you're offended by that movie, hopefully you haven't seen it. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, please don't. Anyway. Uh, here's another one. I really love this photograph. This one is for um, Inge. I-N-G-E. Um, this, is, this, is this, is this is the very first photograph of Spike ever. This is, I had only been playing the role for about two, two and a half hours at this point. Uh, the first scene I ever shot was me stalking Buffy through uh, the bronze. I think it was the bronze. Yeah, I think it was the bronze. And uh, talking to a minion uh, in school hard uh, before I track her down in an alleyway just right after that. Um, and this is the smile of a poor theater actor who had come down to Los Angeles to try to try to, to feed his family. He had just become a father, and he had panicked and run down to Los Angeles to try to make a living. This theater just doesn't pay very much, and uh, that first scene worked really well. That that I I had this sense right from the beginning that this character was working. Like, Spike was a car I knew how to drive. Like, I just instinctually knew what to do with him. And you never really know until you get in it and you start playing it with another actor and you, uh, uh, you're actually doing it. You really don't know if it's gonna work or not. And it was working great. And I had been told that I, I was gonna be used for five episodes or between five and 10 episodes. And, um, I wanted 10. <laughs> I was a father. And this is the smile of someone who thinks he's going to get those 10 episodes and be able to feed his family for probably at least a year on this job. Yeah. Or in other words, maybe I'm not poor anymore. I don't know. But yeah, this is a very, it's a very happy father. Okay, Hanalee, uh, you 
you'd like the spike speech from Touched, and I will do my best not to smudge, um, but forgive me if I do. Uh, okay, here we go. Wish me luck, guys. This is a really, really long one. Okay. Okay, Emily, that is my Mona Lisa for you. <laughs> mm. This one's for Rolla. or any advice and I think Rolla what I will give you is I is what I think is the theme of Buffy um, and I checked with the writers to see if I was right uh, and I was right um, it's don't give up you know um, life is hard life is a challenge life hurts sometimes but it's worth it so it's really important to keep going. Um, you know, it, 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 it started, it was a show that was really targeted toward teenagers, because it's about the time of life when you're old enough to realize that the world is really messed up and it's not perfect. Uh, and when you're old enough to see that clearly, what do you do? Uh, do you give up? Uh, do you join the enemy, or do you try to make the world a little bit of a better place in some way, large or small? Do you try? Um, and Buffy basically says, try, go out, slay demons. Um, so for me, it translates to how do I get out of bed in the morning? <laughs> how do I try again? You know, let's, let's go out there and save the world, one autograph at a time. Or whatever I'm doing, try to try to do a little good in the world. Try to try to help it be a little bit of a better place. And so, Lola, that is uh, the best advice I've ever heard, and it's the best advice I can give you. Don't give up. You're worth it, and so is the world. This one's for Kelly Lynn. 
Oh, I made a promise to a lady. That's a, oh, that's a great quote. Wow, I've never written this before. But that's a great quote. And my memory is failing me as far as which episode that's from. I only remember thinking when I did it that, that I was being very honorable. Like, wow, they're really making Spike. They're trying to give him a little, uh, a little honor. Uh, I did so many horrible things on that show. It was always kind of amazing when I got to do something that was good. Uh, I, was, I always... I always felt that Spike had some good in him. I was always trying to, trying to um, point that out somehow. Uh, and uh, and yeah, I think by the end of the, by the end of the series, he definitely would be the writing uh, followed that. Uh, but here you go, man. Dark Caliban. It's for you. Oh. It's very important. I put uh, like a number on the back of it, or streamily. I have, the, I, I create a huge amount of work for some very good overworked people at Streamly. So, people at Streamly, I'm doing my job. Ooh. This is one from uh, Runaways, uh, which was a really fun job. Um, so, so many, I, th I think I'm going to need more than just one of these to get through this. <laughs> It's a good quote. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's see. Let's see. So once we're done, <laughs> Donna, this is great. This is not a quote from the show, but it's very true. Uh, whether you're gathering with family to the, with, uh, for the holidays sometimes, or if you're planning the murder of a teenager with some other adults like I was on the show, uh, or uh, it applies to a lot of situations, actually. Yeah, I mean, um, streaming shows usually go about three years, uh, and then and then they move on. And Runaways went three years. So I just was like, oh, if ever a show I would like to do more than that because it it shot in town. Uh, everyone was so nice. It was such a great experience, great environment. The people, the producers, the showrunners were very experienced, and they knew how to keep, you know, they knew how to keep a young cast feeling safe and um, enforcing enough structure that everyone was kind of held in line so that it didn't go off the rails. Uh, and everyone just, I don't know, it felt like day camp. It felt like it was, it was just fun to show up to work every day. Uh, and that's an art form. When, when, when you're working at least 12 hour day, days uh, and, you're, and you're doing that most of the year and there's so much pressure when you know that whatever you're doing on set is going to be seen by millions of people all over the world 
you put so much pressure on yourself. So you're under an incredible amount of pressure. You're very tired and you're, you're under that pressure for, for every waking minute while you're doing the show. And, and it can get weird, you know? Human beings respond to pressure differently and, and it, can get, it can get weird. So, so keeping, keeping a, a, a set, a happy place, uh, whenever I run into that, I just really bow down to the producers, the showrunners, uh, because they they really know what they're doing if they can achieve that, and it also speaks well to the actors that they're that they're um, doing their best to um, to keep it fun, man. Um, because whenever you get really tired, it's easy to lose that. Frankly. Okay. Ooh, uh, here's one. Uh, from Torchwood. It's so funny, like, I have, you can't see it, but I'm, I'm at my, I've, I've moved my dining room table so that you can see the tree in the fireplace. Uh, I have just like all of these photographs all over the place from, from different projects that I've done. Uh, I guess I've just been really lucky to do a lot of different projects. And so I have a lot of different pictures. Uh, so I'm kind of like reaching up for that one. Uh, but this one was this one was a really fun job. Um, it was a BBC show called Torchwood, and um, done by the man who uh, did the reboot of Doctor Who and, and just uh, reinvigorated the whole thing. <sighs> Whose name escapes me? Russell T. Russell T. Davis. Sorry, Russell. Um, he took me out to dinner, and he said that 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 uh, Torchwood was his Buffy, and I didn't know what he meant by that. I didn't. That's interesting. Uh, but then I was doing an interview with the BBC, and. The interviewer said, "What do you think about the homophobic backlash against Torchwood?" He stuck the mic in my face, and I was like, "We have a backlash! Oh my god, that's awesome! We have a backlash!" Like, as a subversive artist, like you're trying to make people uncomfortable, <laughs> basically, because, like, as an artist, if you're if if you're saying something that's really true, often some people take offense to that, and some people were offended by Buffy uh, because we were we were fighting a back. We were fighting back against the lie that women can't defend themselves, that women can't hit hard, that women can't fight. And women, women can kick ass, man, guys. I have the scars to prove it. Um, and there were some, some people that were really, really uncomfortable with that uh, back when we were doing the show. They're more comfortable with it now, but back then, a lot of people were upset, and it was cool. Um, but this is fighting back against the, uh, the lie that uh, gay people can't be here. It was just as strident and in your face on that point as Buffy was about the fact that women can kick butt if they want to. Uh, and I was overjoyed to be on the show. Uh, so, uh, Nicole Jones, this is for you. Uh, this is a, a bit of a naughty joke, a nice, I put. Um, if He's a naughty character, so I wanted to put something a little spicy on it. Uh, but if uh, you can show your family, they'll never understand the joke. Um, Remember the word poodle and watch the second episode I was in? I was only in two. If you watch the second one, you'll start laughing about halfway through. And this one's for Kobe. And, and it's a Christmas present and I'm supposed to write something sweet. So I can't write bite. <laughs> Spike didn't say a lot of things that are sweet, so maybe it's not a Spike quote that I'm going to put. That's true. All is love. All is love. That's for you, Kobe. Merry Christmas. Uh, 
That is from a sign that was at the Hard Rock Cafe. I worked as a bartender at the Hard Rock in New York City back when, oops, back when uh, there was only one, there was only two Hard Rocks in the world. There was the original one that was in England, and then they'd open another one in New York. This is before, you know, there's a Hard Rock in every city everywhere. Um, and it was a cool place to live, to, to work. A lot of rock bands uh, uh, would go there and party. Um, it was just like the happening spot in the 80s and I was very lucky to work there. Uh, and on the wall was a clock and on the clock it said, all is love. And I just thought that that was so cool. Um, and I've always remembered that. Um, Sh Shailen? Shailen? I'm not sure. Um, S-H-A-L-L-Y-N. My love, I'm so sorry if I mispronounce your name. Um, uh, I do Cameo, and I have a chance to check online how to pronounce names, and it helps me a lot, but I'm not able to do that right now. Um, you'd like um, this doll, this crappy Kenner-like doll, is my favorite action figure from Spike. I love this one. Uh, uh, because it reminds me of those um, Star Wars action figures. Um, they were the first ones that came out for Star Wars. And uh, um, and I don't know. I just, I just feel like I, I, I really made it when I got my crappy Kenner doll. <laughs> Faith Mielo, welcome to the circus. Um, this is for you. Faith, this is one of my favorite uh, moments in Buffy uh, because, you know, the hand here, this is, this, is, this is Buffy's hand. She's feeding Spike. She's literally saving his life because he's starving to death. He's in a bathtub. And he's still hating her. He's still just staring daggers at her. Uh, and I think that's hilarious. Um, interesting story that uh, oftentimes uh, when I'm at airports, there will be professional autograph people that will want me to sign a bunch of autographs. And if I have time, um, I, I like to, to sign them, you know? Uh, sometimes I don't have time. Sometimes I've got to get going. Uh, but this guy was doing it with his son, and I could tell, like, he had, he had a little, little three-year-old with him, and he was a single father, and he was trying to support his son. So I signed, like, so much stuff for that guy. Um, <laughs> I made time for him, because uh, I get it, you know, when you're a parent, you're trying to, trying to feed a kid, you know, I, I, I remember that panic. And, uh, and, and he, had, he had made this. And, uh, and I was like, could I have one of those? Could I use that? I'd like to, I'd like to sign that at a convention. He's like, dude, thank you. Yes, please. I, you know, uh, my, my pleasure. And so he gave it to me, and I've been using it ever since. Uh, and so it pays to be a nice person sometimes. Uh, and use a little, you know, take a little extra, extra time. Uh, but um, so Faith, you are in the middle of the journey, I am told. 
uh, and you have, you're in season five right now. Uh, and what I will say to you, Faith, is that you have a roller coaster ahead. Uh, there will be times that you are throwing things to the television. Uh, um, Buffy is a roller coaster ride, and there has to be ups and downs. And there will be ups and there will be downs ahead for you. Uh, but, you know, like I, d I wouldn't want a flat roller coaster. I would want my money back if I had that, if I got that. And so, um, uh, Buffy is not a flat roller coaster. Buffy will take you up and then will take you and just crash you down. Uh, but it's a good ride. So, welcome to the circus. This one's for you, Faith. And I'm silent because I just told you the story behind this <laughs> picture. I put bite me, Nicole. Uh, the, that's the only uh, two words that I wrote for Buffy. People ask me if, I, if, if there's any, you know, did you do any, was there any improv? And I'm like, no. On Buffy, if we got a comma wrong, we, we went back and got it right. Like, it was do the script. Don't do anything but the script, because the script is actually amazing. So, uh, it was not the kind of show where uh, you got away with doing your own stuff. Um, and so, I, I went to England and I heard people saying, bite me. And I thought, oh, that, that's a great idea. Maybe get that on the show some way. But I knew that they wouldn't take my advice on anything. So, I just started to tell some of the writers to bite me every once in a while. And then they thought of it. <laughs> But I knew. I was planting the seed. This is for Electra from Athens, Greece. Hello, Electra. It's so cool. I, I, I sometimes pinch myself that I get, to, I get to be in contact with people all over the world uh, through Buffy. And some of the other things I've done, but primarily through Buffy, uh, it just amazes me. What a life. What a life. I pinch myself. So, Electra, if you're watching, did you watch um, Buffy in Greek or did you watch it in English with subtitles? And if you watched it in Greek, was the actor who did Spike, was he good? I hope. <laughs> I always hope that. But this is for you, Electra. Mysterious. This no name on this, no quote on this. Just, just sign it, man. Okay, mystery person. This one's for you. This is the most fascinating one of the day. Oh, this is a funny one. Um, okay, so this is this is the headshot that I'm currently using uh, in Hollywood. You know, so you send me a headshot. This is what he looks like these days, kind of thing. Um, and I, I went to, I went, and I, and I used a, <clears throat> a really a pretty good.
One love, no exception. This is for hey, this is for Amy. Okay, so anyway, um, so the guy that the guy that I was uh, the photographer was really specific. He did not want me expressing anything. He said all of that is a lie. I just want you to look down and look up, and I'm going to take the picture. Look down, look up, um, and. At the end, I was like, okay, we'll try that. And, and um, at the end of the, uh, at the session, I was like, I would like an extra one because I, I am going to be doing a voting campaign uh, where on Twitter, where uh, if you vote, um, then I will respond to your tweet and say hi, you know, try to kind of get people to vote. Um, and I want to wear my I voted sticker for that. Uh, and so I put the little I voted sticker on my lapel and we took another shot and that was the best one of the whole, the whole day. Like that was the only one where I looked like I was alive. <laughs> like I was like, I was happy. I had a purpose. I was trying to do something. It was active. Like there, this is by far the best picture of the whole day. Uh, and then we just, we just. I, I decided I'm going to use that one for my headshot, man. I, I look, I look, because the other ones were just kind of dead. Um, he was he was maniacal about that. A really good photographer. Um, kind of like, kind of like um, David Mamet, who is a fabulous writer. But as a director, he, he doesn't want his actors to emote anything. He just wants to just say the line. That's all I want. Uh, and so the, the actors are kind of flat in those movies, I think. But anyway, Amy, this is the real me. This is not a character. This is just me uh, trying to get people to vote, actually. Uh, which is uh, something I'm very uh, kind of passionate about. Like in Australia, it's mandatory. You have to vote. Like, I don't know what they do to you if you don't vote. But, um, yeah, they're serious about it. I kind of, I like that. I think, I think we should all vote, man. But uh, Amy, this is for you. Irene. Wanted the same one. I'm just, I was just reading a really nice uh, note that she that she wrote. Um, same, really nice note. Uh, and thank you, Irene. Um, I am so lucky. She says, you know, she really likes my work as a musician and an actor, and I, I helped her in ways that she can't easily explain. And I just, I, I am humbled by that. I, I, um, I'm so lucky because, like, I used to do theater, and you could, you could reach about ten thousand people per play if you sold out every show. You know, if you were, if you were at a professional house and it was like five hundred to seven fifty, you know, seats, you could reach about that in the run of a play. Um, and you know, people would people would stop. I'd be like walking. People would be like, I saw your Macbeth last night. Thank you very much. And, um, but to be able to 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 do it to 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 do it on television, um, to 
To be on television, on a show that has something to say, on a show that really can help the world, one that matters, um, it's, I'm just so fortunate. Uh, I didn't come down, frankly, to help people. I came down selfishly as a father to try to feed my family. And I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that, but I ended up on a show that mattered. And I just, I just, I'm so fortunate, I can't even tell you. Um, I thought that I had given up trying, trying to change the world. I, I, I was, I was trying to help the world through theater. Uh, uh, you know, saving the world one heart at a time. Just trying to do theater that, that uh, help people said the truth, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, and I came down to Los Angeles to, to basically prostitute myself and sell out and just try to make some money so I could buy some diapers. And I ended up on a show that probably did more good than anything else that I've done in my life. I'm so lucky. Irene, this is for you. Brandon said he's a fan of Buffy and without a trace. Wow. That, you know, Brandon, um, I really enjoyed working on Without a Trace. And I quit to do that horrible um, uh, uh, Dragon Ball movie. That's one of the big regrets of my life. <laughs> Is uh, uh, I got a three picture deal to do the Dragon Ball movies, and they told me that the first one was going to be a hundred and twenty million dollar budget, and that Stephen Chow was producing it. Stephen Chow did Kung Fu Hustle, which is, I think, the only good Dragon Ball movie ever made, basically. It's a Chinese film. It's it's a uh, mystical, goofy, violent. It's everything you need for a Dragon Ball movie. Um, and I get down to Durango, Mexico to do the film, and it's a $30 million picture, and Stephen Chow is nowhere to be seen. He has nothing to do with the project. <laughs> it was a lie. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I quit a really good television show to go down there and do it. And if I hadn't have done that, if I could go back and whisper in myself in the ear, I might be on some cop show right now. I'd be on CSI. Because <laughs> those things film in Los Angeles, man. Those are good jobs. But anyway, Brandon, I'm glad you enjoyed Without Trace. I'm glad you enjoyed Buffy. This one's for you, bro. This one's for Robin. Robin, you wanted something heartfelt. And so I'm writing, you are beautiful. Because I think we all are. It's one of my most passionate beliefs. There you go. That's for you, Robin. Hi, Maddie. Let's see. What are some of the uh, what are some of the questions I get asked? 
about Buffy. I can answer and answer questions that are often asked about Buffy. Um, what's my favorite episode is probably the, the, the question I get asked most of the time. And I say, I cannot pick one, it's like picking your children. Um, I would say one of my favorite episodes to watch is The, the Body. Um, because I think that the, the show proved that you don't need vampires for Buffy. You know, you, you don't need special effects. You don't, you don't need stunts. You can just treat it as a drama Uh, and just show a young woman losing her mom, you know, it, it, it's it's so strong dramatically. You don't need any of the rest of it um, Such a fabulous Fabulous episode um, School heart is another one just because that was so in, it was so intense for me um, Here you go, Maddie That's for you Um, because again, I, I was talking about it before, I, 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 uh, I went from, from being very poor and feeling like I was failing as a parent to, uh, to be, to going home and being like, honey, we got health insurance, you know, we can all see the doctor now. Uh, we can fix the car. We can buy meat. <laughs> uh, uh, and so I will, that will always be one of my favorite episodes. The guy that, uh, hold on, favorite, um, your favorite quote. Well, my favorite quote, this is for Lucy, my favorite quote is bite me. And I'm going to put that. Because like I said before, that's the one that I wrote. I don't know if they're still saying it, but when I went to London, that's what everyone was saying. Bite me. Oh, bite me. So where was I? Uh, yeah, so School Heart. Uh, Fool for Love is another one. Wait. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. It's all about remembering to put the uh, the number on the back of the photograph. I don't know if you see. Uh, I bet I'm not alone in people who who uh, sign for Streamly. But that's what we're more than anything else. Just don't forget the number on the back, Lucy. This is for you. Um, yeah, Fool for Love was another one uh, that was really really good. Uh, I got to do a lot of stunts on that. Grace would like a Christmas. You got it. Grace wanted a Christmas message and then anything. <laughs> so I said, Merry Christmas, but bite me. <laughs> Terrible. This is for you, Grace. Um, so yeah, so I got to do a bunch of uh, stunts on School Hard, uh, and I got to fight Bruce Lee's, uh, I think it's her second cousin. Um, Ming Lee, who is uh, one of the deadliest people on planet Earth, I think. Uh, and uh, yeah, she <laughs> she's she is not a big person. She's she's diminutive, but she is so well trained that she is uh, absolutely deadly. And uh, convinced me that women kick ass if they want to. It's all about training. More than anything else is how how well are you trained as as far as you know can you kick my ass?
Cassandra, you'd like me to do the spike accent while I'm signing. Oh my God, no, I don't do the accent anymore, love. It's been a long time, you know, I've forgotten how. Uh, I've got to split my focus now and do acting while I sign to see, to see how good I am at it at all. Right, I'm doing fairly well, I think. Yeah, you know, I go over to England and the, the girls go, um, give us your sexy British accent. I'm like, what's wrong with the American ones? She's, they're like, it's not so hot, really. It's not so nice at all. Someone told me that they thought, they, they think I'm British in England and, and it's really kind of a letdown when they find out it's all a lie. Um, but someone said, you know, yeah, you sound British. It's just, I can't tell where you're from which is kind of like a British way of saying that your accent isn't that great. Uh, because British people can tell where you're from within 100 miles uh, by your accent. Uh, so they just couldn't tell where Spike was from. He's supposed to be from London, but apparently it's not, the accent isn't perfect, so you can't really tell. But, you know, bite me. Cassandra, that's for you. Another one for Debs. Debs uh, loves Torchwood and also saw uh, Ghost of the Robot perform in Leeds. Uh, I think that was a pretty good show, actually. Was that our first tour, Debs, or was that the second one? I think that was the first one. Debs, that is, whoops, that is for you. Rock on, baby. Crystal, what a nice message, thank you. Crystal was, gave me such a nice message, I'm kind of blushing. <laughs> no, man. Crystal, you said I saved your teen years. That's freaking awesome. Um, I'm honored. Um, Leonard Amoy saved my teen years. He got me through my teenage years. Um, yeah, if I helped you with that, I am quite happy. This is for you, Crystal. Sierra Lee uh, is a, is a self-proclaimed millennial from Dallas, Texas. Uh, really good to hear from you, Sierra. Uh, yeah, man, Dallas is awesome. Love a millennial. I think everyone should love a millennial. <laughs> it says your favorite you're you're my favorite character from Buffy love a millennial lol I love it
one's for Jessica Statham. Statham. So anyway, yes, favorite episodes. So, um, yeah, I, I probably did too many stunts uh, for Buffy. Like, I came down to Los Angeles, and the first time I said, oh, we're going to be doing stunts today, you can sit down and your stuntman will be taking that. And I was like, I've been doing stunts for like 15 years, man. On, st on stage, you don't get a stunt, man. You have to do it yourself. So, yeah, I got that. I can do that. Don't you know, let me do that. And I was pretty proud about that. Also, you know, when, you, when you've had some martial arts training, you know how to fall and you know how to do some, some of that stuff. That's for this for you. So I was, I was very proud and I probably did too many of my own stunts. Uh, because you don't have to go to the hospital. It's kind of like playing football, man. Like you don't have to go to the hospital but you're pretty sore uh, the next day, and uh, if you do it for too many years, you start walking differently. And um, but when we did uh, when we did Fool for Love, I, I hadn't really uh, learned that yet, and I just had a blast just throwing my body around. <laughs> this one's for Anton. Because I think most of we have, I had fights on the subway in that. I had fights for the Boxer Rebellion in in China for that. I had fights the Third Slayer. I don't know. Lots, I had lots of fighting to do on that episode, and I had a great time. There you go, Lynn. Or Anton. Wow. Yeah, I remember Steve Tartaglia, who was the, uh, the guy who did, um, he was a stuntman who also played Spike. There's two people who played Spike, me and him. Uh, and he came up to me one time, and, uh, and he's like, James, uh, the stunt crew, we're really impressed that you like to do so many of your own stunts. Really, very impressive. Super impressive. But, <laughs> if I get in one shot an episode, my pay doubles. If you know what I mean. And I was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Um, so... After that, we would conspire together about when I would twist my ankle or just somehow not be able to do something. But frankly, it wasn't all that hard because a lot of this stuff I didn't want to do. Like, a, um, Whenever I work with a stunt coordinator, the the head of this, you know, the, the the head guy or woman who's doing the stunts, uh, um, the boss for stunts. Whenever I work, I, whenever I meet somebody who I'm doing stunts, I always always go um, black belt, green belt, uh, go down to my waist, and then I go full body. I say bullshit. Like, if you want me to close up, I look like Bruce Lee. Really good at that. If you want me waist up. I'm like a green belt. I'm, I can get it done for you. I can get all the meat and potatoes. It's all good. If you want me full body, get a stunt man. <laughs> uh, you'll get a much better shot. I'm not a black belt. I'm a green belt in judo, and it shows. Uh, so if you, you know, if you want, if you want super kung fu stuff, triple, you know, spinning kicks and all of that stuff, you're gonna have to get someone else to do that. Uh, Adrian. That's for you. Oh, right on. 
Cindy would like a quote from uh, one of the songs uh, from Ghost of the Robot, from Vandals. Ooh, Keep Me Out of Trouble by Renee Fast. I like that. Escaping the boredom of the middle classes and keeping out of trouble by running fast. We're just foolish kids on Saturday night. We're button down vandals out of sight. <laughs> That's for you, Cindy. Rock on, babe. Okay, listen, I'll bite you in a heartbeat. Oh, how true. Fulgent poem by William. Morgan, that's for you. Right on. Another song of Sylvie. Praise me, this noble and beautiful, immortal and most powerful God Zamasu. Okay, so this guy was a god, and he was very full of himself. <laughs> oh my god. Awesome. This is for Adrian.
how do you get the audience to hate you? You say something like, praise me, this noble and beautiful, immortal and most powerful god, Zamsu. <laughs> and I smudged it, Adrian, because it's the whole paragraph. Yep, there it is. There's your autograph right there. I do my best. That's for you, Adrian. For those of you who are left-handed, everyone who's left-handed out there is like, oh, I feel for you, man. I feel your pain. Everyone who's right-handed is like, what's, what's the deal? I don't get it. Oh, what a great quote. Savita. There's a hole in the world. Feels like, feels like we ought to have known. Mm. I love that line. There's a hole in the world. Feels like we ought to have known. 13 words. I think that's about as long as a quote can be and still give you a nice graphic, well done autograph that you can put on the wall. More than 13, it starts to get messy. As far as I'm concerned. Okay, here we go. That's for you, Sabine. Oh, wow! I have to go get this one from the box. I'll be right back, guys. It's a whole different one. <laughs> like 45 different, different pictures to choose from. This one is Subway Spike. That was a fun day. Oh my God. Oh. This one's to Tuesday. Yeah, there was, I often thought I got some, su such good stuff when I, when I was doing fight, you know, the acting in the fight sequences, I always liked a lot because I wasn't focused on my acting. I was really just focused on getting the stunt done and then everything else just kind of flowed. Um, I think that's kind of the secret of film acting is you don't think about it too much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Plus it's not the costumes. That's for you, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. 
That's just for Dana. Hey, Dana. I'm trying to remember what episode this is. This is, this is like, this is one of those moments when Spike wasn't being a jerk. He was being very nice. I'm trying to remember which one that was. Janessa would like out for a walk. Yeah, I, I remember when I did that scene, I was not aware that that was a funny line at all. I was in just I was in I was I was being humiliated by Buffy, and I, I just remember it, it being very painful. <laughs> uh, like, what are you doing out here, Spike? Like, like Buffy, you know what I'm doing. I'm in love with you. I'm stalking you, and you've caught me. Like, it's just so humiliating. But I think that's why it's so funny, is because I wasn't playing the humor. I was, I was playing the, the scene. That's what I think, um, what I found about doing the show was, that's how you got the humor. You didn't play it. You played it straight. You played it as if you were playing a drama, and the humor would come out. That's why I think that the, the, the movie wasn't as successful, is because they played into the humor. They were wacka, wacka, wacka telling jokes, and it just doesn't really, it doesn't work as well that way. So that's for you, Jessica. This is for Sharon. Sharon, who is able to do what I'm constantly trying to do, which is lose weight. Sharon just lost a lot of weight. And as an actor, I've been trying to lose weight for the last 25 years. I mean, constantly, I just need to lose five pounds. I just need to lose 15 pounds. I just like, th 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 that is the thought, that's primary, primary thought all the time. So Sharon, <laughs> Sharon you are. Yeah, sure, and I could use your discipline. Right around the holidays, I could use it a lot. There you go. Oh. Sam, uh... So, so he, Sam says that uh, watching me had him 
uh, want to get into acting and and wondering if I'm coming to Chicago soon. Uh, I don't know that I I don't think so. Uh, but what I will say is that, that Chicago is the best place in the world of it to be acting, Sam. Uh, Chicago saved me. Uh, Chicago is the center of the earth as far as stage acting in my book. It's, it's got the best. It's got the best theater in the world. Uh, I love Chicago for that reason. Uh, so Sam, man, if you're acting in Chicago, I'm a little jealous. That's for you. This one's for Lisa. Uh, from her daughter, who says that she asks her mother what she wants for Christmas every year, or for her birthday every year, and every year her mom says, Spike. <laughs> so, this is as close as she can get. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Happy birthday, Kay. And this one's from Nabby. Hey, Nabby. I suspect that this photograph, this looks suspiciously like one of the times where I was stealing Buffy's light. I would, like they would always give me villainous light. Um, but I was like, I want pretty light too. But they never would, like if they were lighting me, they would never light me pretty. They would always light me villainous. Um, and they would always light Buffy, they would always give Buffy the pretty light. And I, I thought, well, I'm just, as soon as, when we're blocking, as soon as Sarah leaves her position, I'm going to find a way to get on that mark facing the same way that she's facing. Because I know what happens in television um, is that, and this one's for Veronica, uh, that we're going fast, man. Uh, and if 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 I get on that mark, it, there's already light there. They're just going to use Buffy's light and get and, and catch me and get me get me quick, and I'm going to get Buffy light for that shot. Uh, and I would do that all the time. And they loved it because it saved them time. But I wasn't doing it to save them time. I was doing it because I want a pretty Buffy light. <laughs> Like, if, they, if you think that they're lighting you to look hideous, don't complain about it. Just find a way to steal a good light, you know? That's for you, Veronica. I'm trying to think, is this, is this Bet Beat? Uh, wants a great quote. What can I tell you, babe? 
I've always been bad. That's for you, love. I'm pausing because people, people uh, in the special instructions, they they like they write a small paragraph of of, of uh, uh, they're just reaching out, wanting to tell me something, and I and I want to, I don't want to um, skip over that part. Who thinks that I have kind eyes and gave Spike kind eyes? Yeah, yeah, I try to do that. Heart, and so I'm going to put the heart on the sleeve again. There you go, love. This is Joanna. But don't give up. That's for you. Boom, Chris. That's for you, man. I really love staring at this photograph. I'll be honest, it's just such a good memory. I, I, I am. I'm put in mind, I was thinking about that this morning, of what a Hail Mary it was for me to, to think that, you know, because I, I had my, I remember watching my son being wiped off at the birthing table at Seattle Hospital and thinking, I've got to try to make money. Like, I, I, I made a huge mistake. Like, I, 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 was a, I decided to be a stage actor and I'm so poor and now I'm a father and like, this is not going to go well. Um, and what a Hail Mary it was it's for you, Jane, to move to Los Angeles where there's a million actors who are out, literally a million actors out of work looking for work. Like an ocean. And to think that, that I was going to be able to come down into that ocean and get noticed and be able to make a living. I'm glad that I couldn't talk to myself. I would have talked myself out of it. 
if I'd have known what the reality was. <clears throat> this is Patine Marie. Well, maybe love's bitch, but at least I'm man enough to admit it. That's for you, dear. This is for Courtney Joe. Uh, Courtney, it was so good to meet you in Saskatoon. Happy birthday, Courtney. You'll always be my slayer. That's really cool. I don't know that I've ever written that before. So Claudia, that's one of a kind. watched the show with her father and laughed together. That makes me really happy. My family never watched Buffy. My kids never watched it. My parents never watched it. And that really upset me for a while. Until I realized that I wouldn't want to watch my son do the things that I was doing on the show. <laughs> Here you go, Mary. I wouldn't want to watch my dad do those things either. And I came to realize, I get it. Bye. It's okay. This one's for Julie.
for Jason. I believe it's Leia. This one's for you, love. Maybe it's Leia. I hope it's Leia. I don't know. Let's go. Guys, I'm going to take just a slight break. I'll be right back. I gotta take care of stuff. Hi. <laughs> this one's for Isabella.
Isabella said five words or less. I'm suspecting you want out for a walk, bitch, and not just me to write five words or less. That doesn't make sense. Let me try that again. Syria. And for Chuck. Who says, greetings from the Netherlands, and hello, Char. I am going to brag that I signed an autograph from someone from the Netherlands today. I have to be careful with my friends. Like, if I tell them the, the honest to God truth, what did you do today? Oh, signing autographs for people all over the world. They're like, ah, screw you. You're all full of yourself. <laughs> I have to be careful. Like, no, that's what I did. Oh, let's see. This one's for Aaron. Taylor. Oh, there 
go love. Kelly says that she uh, she likes Spike so much she used uh, a quote for her wedding. Eyeballs to entrails, my sweet. I'm gonna put that on your autograph, Kelly. This is for summer. So smells for crisp. Crystal Church, what a great name. Ryan.
stands for Emerald, aka Emmy. So I'm going to write Emmy. This for J. Look at that lip, gonna get it. Benji, who's a Dresden fan. Kick ass. For Zare. for devil. My
came at once. Help me out here, Spock. I don't speak loser. <laughs> or is it, Ky is it Kyla? <sighs> My profound apologies if I if I have pronounced anyone's name wrong. I don't think this one has a name. A mystery. I know I'm a bad poet. Chantal. Thank you for your kind words, Chantal. This one's for Amber, and all she wants me to say is hi. Hi, Amber. There you go. And another one for me, different. That's for you, Amber. Oh, another one for Amber.
hands for Anne. Or maybe Dirt Slayer, but you're the one who likes to roll on it. This one's for Lisa. I didn't realize that the subway spike was going to be so... I'm just going to take him right out of the cellophane, man. To Mackenzie. No, sorry, Jen, I don't have the accent unless you pay me. Oh, you pay me? Yeah, I have the accent. Yeah, I do. Jen said she always forgets that I don't have the accent. I've got it in my pocket.
and smaller feeling. Okay. And one for Carol. Okay, Monique. Monique, I will try to write all of that. It's a great quote. Great love is wild and passionate and dangerous. It burns and consumes. Very cool. And very true. Very good, Monique. So good to see you in Paris. Mystery. No name, no quote, just my little old signature. There you go, mystery person. And last but not least, to Aaron. That's why I was saving it. I've got to go get the. Where is that? There it is. <laughs> From one actor to another, you are awesome. Well, guys, that's the end of my Christmas special. I'm so glad you joined me. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Um, I'm going to go brag to all my friends uh, that I did this. <laughs> no, I'm actually going to keep it to myself because they think, they think that I've gone off the rails and I've got a big ego if I even halfway admit to all the fun I have. Uh, you guys are absolutely awesome. And um, I know so little about Facebook. Oh, there's the finish button. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> I love you all. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.